welcome everybody. This is the Spiritual Handyman Internet TV show. And I'm super excited today to have uh, Wendy Leva with us. And she is a practicing clinical hypnotist. And she's going to share with us what her spiritual unfolding was like and uh, what she's learned along the way and how she's applied that into her daily living and into her practice. Uh, so I will uh, pass things right over to Wendy and uh, allow her to introduce herself and uh, take it away. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Um, I'm excited to be here. This is very nice of you to interview me. That feels special. <laughs> And um, wow, where do I begin? Um, I found that I was most successful with my clients when I meditated on them before they arrived and connected to their spiritual team. And once I was able to do that, some profound healing happened. And I learned how to do that through um, connecting with the Akashic Records as well as leaning on some newfound shamanic skills that I didn't know I had in my family line. Yeah, so um, just in meeting clients and networking and building my business, I met some truly wonderful people. And one of them was Kate Mariah, who is a psychic medium and intuitive healer. And it was one of those just two minute readings, drew my name out of a hat. I asked her a deep question and she, went deep and said, you know what, you've got some mad skills there that you need to work on and grow. And that sent me down a rabbit hole <laughs> of just figuring out what does she mean? What does that mean? What does it mean to have powers, magic? What does that mean? And I started hunting around on the internet, of course, and then just speaking to my dad because it started to reawaken some memories that he and I had had some pretty fun, deep talks when I was a kid. Um, at a very young age, I was asking, what's a soul? Where does the soul go? What, what does that mean for us in our everyday lives? And he is also a deeply spiritual man. And we had some pretty rad talks. <laughs> and um, I ended up burying those talks because sometimes when you don't have discernment, you talk about these things with people who aren't ready to talk about those things. And then they think you're weird. So. Um, I shut down that part of myself, that intuition, that hunger to learn more about the universe and our place in it. And um, yeah, Kate kind of woke that back up. And so I started asking my dad some more questions. And um, Kate brought forth one of my ancestors, um, who is my uncle, Lupe. No one talked about him in the family. I had no idea who he was. So when I asked my dad, I said, Dad, who's Lupe? He stopped dead in his tracks. How do you know who Lupe is? And then we started talking and I realized that I come from a, a long line of healers, shamanic healers that just goes back and back and back. So um, I learned to just connect with them. I've had several healers along the way, a lot of shamanic teachers along the way, but I would say that my best teachers are when I connect with my ancestors, they actually become my best shamanic teachers. And it's been magical. The synchronicities keep blowing me away. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like there was quite a bit of that uh, yeah. and involved, especially early on. Mm -hmm. uh, can, you, can you help us understand a little bit about uh, what it was like kind of leading up to when you finally had that that two minute reading that really started, you know, that, that moment that started getting things moving for you. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. was your, what was your state of mind and what was your spirituality looking like at that time? Um, I was just kind of dabbling. I was just interested. I wasn't, wasn't into um, psychics and psychic mediums. I was just kind of like, eh, I know that they're out there, but what are the chances of actually connecting with a real one. <laughs> and Kate was the real deal. And I remember that when she asked if she could connect with my energy and we locked eyes, I just felt like this reeling emotion, this just this falling back almost. And I was immediately covered in chills. Um, it was very disorienting. And when she gave that reading, I just kept hearing, you know, yes, yes, listen to this. This is, this is what you need to do. And um, I had the best sleep that I had ever had that night. <laughs> and now I know I was doing some deep work <laughs> while I was sleeping. 
And when I woke up, it was just this hunger, this hunger to find out more, you know, what is it? What does it mean? What did this mean when she said, um, you know, dark Lilith? What does that mean? Um, what does it mean to go deep down into the underground and connect with ancestors? What does that mean? So I just, you know, Googled the heck out of it. <laughs> and that led me down so many uh, wormholes that I just started piecing everything together. But the synchronicities kept leading me back to my ancestry of Aztec Indian um, and Mayan Indian and just following the principles of that. And it really opened the doors. It was like, okay, this is the right door that you you go down. This is this is the breadcrumb for you to follow. And so I just started following those breadcrumbs. And again, the synchronicities were just wild, wild. The things that my dad had taught me, the things that had always stood out to me when I went to the pyramids and talked to the locals, that it all just started to make sense. I started to make sense to me because I never felt like I fit in. And now knowing my heritage and, and what I can bring to this world and what my gifts are, I was finally like, oh, I fit in. I know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> and it a, wasn't corporate HR. <laughs> <laughs> Funny how that, that switch sort of uh, happens on its own. It, yeah. really, it really begins to uh, put you in a, in a place where you can't help but make the switches and make the the uh you know like you said following those breadcrumbs yeah so, uh, what it sounds like is that you you and and just to recap it sounds like you were kind of questioning the whole spiritual possibility and then when it awakened in you that's mm -hmm. when the that part of you really ignited and and you started mm -hmm. to follow the, the your intuition or did you follow the what was most interesting for you how did you how did you decide yeah. what that looked like getting started? um intuition yeah it was what i couldn't stop thinking about um it was i just kept seeing the same things popping up in different places so you know how when you hear a funny word or a song or something an image and you just keep seeing it everywhere and it becomes like okay i can't ignore this anymore then you follow that. So there was, there was some of that. Um, there was a lot of just that deep uh, gut feeling, just that pull of this is where I need to go next. And then once I went there next, that felt right. I felt like a sense of settling, a sense of coming back down into my body. Yeah, it was a very visceral experience. It still is. Gotcha. That's the it's nice that there was immediate validation on on some of those things that sounded like sounds like that synchronicity uh, started to happen very quickly for you is that yes. right yeah like you said it was um a light switch it was like someone finally flipped the switch and my team was just like all right guys <laughs> she's ready let's give her everything we got she can handle it let's just go 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 and it really has been in the last two years just go 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 <laughs> kind of, yeah, I kind of wish that, yeah, it would have been nice to have like a slow, easy, you know, way into this, but it really, it really hasn't. I just, um, it's kind of like a ping pong feeling like, oh, we're going over here. Oh, no, we're going over here now. Oh, okay. We're going over here. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you say are the, some of the things that initially shifted for you uh, mm -hmm. outside of what you shared with us, but your feelings and uh, you know, how the spirituality was unfolding and yeah. uh, how did you become convinced? It, was it just the synchronicity or uh, was it a resonance within? Help, help me understand what, what the benefits were of that unfolding for you and, and, yeah. and how you knew the information was right. Right. Yeah. Um, gosh, it was everything that you just said. Um, it was just, it was a noticing. It was a noticing of, of nature. Really, that's what I think stands out profound is I had to be in nature as much as I possibly could. I couldn't stand having windows closed anymore. I had to have the curtains wide open all the time. I had to be outside all the time. I just felt this connection to the earth. And um, I think one of those moments was I realized when on my walks that there was a particular tree that I kept noticing. And um, I thought, just a little a whispering and niggling connect with this tree so 
So on my next meditation, I connected with that tree and it was like coming home. It was a warm feeling. It was a settling down into my body kind of feeling and just this overwhelming sense of love. And before I even knew what I was doing, I was exchanging energy with this tree. And um, my husband actually pointed out that the tree had been kind of sick and it really wasn't doing very well. But after I started connecting with this tree, it is one of the largest trees now. And the birds always root and nest in that tree. So that was, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely a beautiful experience. Yeah. And, you know, it sounds like it was very grounding as well. Would you yes. say that the, the grounding has been an important factor, an important piece in the development? Yeah. I had no idea how much outside of myself I was. Um, until I started making that effort, like getting back into nature and realizing what it felt to be in this body and to be connected to root chakras, to mother earth, just really being comfortable coming back down into this body because I spent so much time, maybe not with my head in the clouds, but just always in my mind, the thinking, the 3D thoughts. Right. And now when it comes down to it, I have to ground all the time and it, feels good <laughs> in any way that I can. I got to ground. <laughs> and I, I, I share that, uh, that love for grounding. It's something that, that I'm always connecting to and reconnecting to. Uh, yes. Like you said, you, you're up in your head and there's, there's so many things going on up there and, and having an opportunity to just slow down a little bit and to, yeah. uh, to recognize that, that in some ways you can just be an observer. I, I feel like that's a powerful piece and it's, Sounds like for you that that uh, the noticing is what kind of led to that. Would would you say that the the initial awareness uh, that you saw, you know, you, did you see everything as new? Did you just notice a few things here and there? What did that feel like as it was unfolding? Um, it was noticing things here and there. Um, just nature, I guess, became more vivid. Um, animals I felt would notice me more. <laughs> um, and it was uh, noticing number synchronicities. It was noticing the songs on the radio really did speak to what I was going through at that moment or what I was feeling at that moment or questioning in that moment. Um, and really, yeah, becoming an observer, becoming an observer of my kids um, and, the, and my, or my clients that I would work with and friends just kind of becoming a watcher and listening a lot more than I was speaking, which was nice <laughs> to just sit back and, and take it all in and noticing how nature really is a reflection of how we could be, how we could be uh, more in tune with things. And that if we are more in tune with things, not a whole lot is a surprise. It's just a gentle unfolding. So if we follow the seasons, things don't become so overwhelming. If we follow our natural clock, things aren't so tiring. <laughs> if we know when to slow down, it just becomes a whole lot easier. So I guess that, that that's been a huge profound effect on me because I was used to go, go, going, um, all about the dollar and, and let's go, go, go. And now it's just let's just see what happens. Let's just see how this unfolds. You know, nature isn't like, oh my gosh, summer's coming. <laughs> oh my gosh, winter's coming. It happens all the time, it happens year after year. Let's just watch and see how this unfolds. I, I thank you for sharing that. That's really powerful information. And it's, it's a great opportunity as we go through our experience to recognize uh, that, you know, we have that fast pace but the world around us is actually reminding us that it, it's, it's winter time. It's actually uh, a time to be, to be settled in and to, to allow things to be quieted. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then in the spring is a great time to be go, go, go. And, uh, yeah. you know, the summer, for me in the summer, I love to be outside. Uh, and the, the spring and summer drive me outside to, you know, mm -hmm. as much as I can. So like you said, it's, sort of putting you out in nature yeah and then and then in the fall when things change it's yeah. so beautiful it's hard to not go outside <laughs> right uh, it's, and it's, it's really just uh sharing that with us and pushing us that direction i 
I feel like that's such a powerful point. I, yeah. I, the, to, to ask a little more about uh, finding out about the long line of healers, you shared that uh, you and your dad were that connection that mm -hmm. first started. Uh, yeah. How did that feel talking to him that first time and, and, and bringing those things up again? What, was, what were you going through when that happened? Yeah, well, it was beautiful. Actually, we were at a pyramid site called Ushmal, and um, I just felt like it was a really good time to bring it up. It was the right time to bring it up. And I did have my guides with me. I had Tio Lupe with me. And it was just one of those moments where dad hung back and I hung back and my husband and kids and mom, you know, went forward to go explore the pyramids. And I just said, so, hey, dad, you know, tell me about Tio Lupe. Tell me about grandfather. Tell me about what this all means. And he said, wow, you know, that, that you're talking about this. And he told me about Lupe and um, that he was my, obviously my grandfather's brother and they were best friends. They came from a family of, gosh, was it 12 kids, 12, 13 kids and um, how everyone kind of had a special sauce. Everyone had a little bit of magic to them. And so we just talked about the magic that I was experiencing and my knowledge of what I had learned from Lupe and who he was and how on earth would I know these things unless I could truly connect with his energy. And then we went back to the house and we called my aunt who was really kind of the story keeper of the family and she, you know, we sat down, we drew out a family tree and we talked about the line as far back as she could remember and who, who died and how they died and um, the, the weird things that had happened in our family and the property that we had all lived on and why we had to leave the property. And it turns out there was a family curse and that curse had staunched everyone's ability to practice their gifts in this world right down to my father who can see the dead and if he so choose he could speak with the dead but he denies it <laughs> he sees them but he doesn't want to interact with them so he didn't want to share that gift with the world to my grandfather who uh, people would come to the house all the time 24 by 7 asking him for his healing hands and he, my dad remembers him just being so grumpy about it like ah here comes another person disrupting my day. And he, you know, he reluctantly healed people. Um, and Lupe, his gift was um, he could project images and words and love into people's hearts. And um, almost, I guess, I guess he could be, it was telepathy of a sort. Um, and he, I definitely feel him when I'm working with my clients. Um, to cousins who could see and work with the dead, um, to other family members who could also hands-on healing. So it's just fascinating that there are all these healers in my family and I never knew and no one, not a single one of them, voluntarily shared their gift with the world. I'm the first one. I'm the first one to bring it to the world and say, hey, this is what I can do and I'm an intuitive healer and I want to share that with you. So that's been an adjustment for the family for sure <laughs> because everyone was like we don't talk about that we just we don't talk about that we do that and i'm over here going why not <laughs> <laughs> why don't so we you, talk about this <laughs> you, kind of, you kind of reached out and broke the mold and then i did uh, and, and and leveraged what you knew about the the conversations from your father and then that yeah. led to your aunt and that sounds like where everything really busted open oh um, yeah was that a uh, was was that a surprise to you that your aunt was brought into it that there was so much more information yeah. that was just a step away? Yeah, it it literally felt like I uh, knocked on the door and they all rushed to open it. Like finally, someone is ready to heal our family line and bring these gifts forward. And I'm constantly amazed and comforted by anyone in our family line that I ask for help. They willingly help. They, they want to help me move forward in sharing this gift with the world, um, especially my grandfather. I really didn't know him very well growing up. He was a very quiet man, um, 
felt like he was an angry man and he just wanted to connect with my brother. And he since passed, um, but of course I'm connecting with him on a completely different, more precious level. And he thought that my brother would have the gift. He didn't even think that I would have the gift because he and his brother had the gift, my dad had the gift. He wasn't really thinking that a female could have the gift. And so he never bothered to connect with me as a kid. And um, he now is one of my main guides. And he once shared with me that he is so proud that I'm the one to share the gift with the world. So that was, that was huge for me. That was a validation that, okay, I am supposed to be doing this. I'm supposed to be doing this for all the Labas, that this is what we were meant to do. And it's kind of like that family curse has been broke. <laughs> right. It's, so, yeah. it, it sounds like there was a, a huge recognition in your family uh, yeah. of what you refer to as that curse. And, yeah. and it really took someone to step out that, yeah. that, which is exactly what you've done to, yeah. to you know, distance your family and clear that out of the way. Yes. Uh, it sounds like not only were they healers, but there might have been shamans as yeah. part of that. So mm -hmm. knowing that, mm -hmm. that that's, that, uh, that's the hint of what I'm getting here. Yeah. So do, you, do you consider yourself a shaman? Have you I been do. you know labeled that by, through yeah. your guides? Help me understand yes. how that part unfolded as well. So, um, again, in my Google research <laughs> and what it meant to uh, go down deep and connect with ancestors, you know, of course, shamans came up and curanderos came up and um, healers. I consider healers and shamans to kind of, and when I speak of it, it's kind of the same thing for me. Um, but I just started connecting with people, of course, not at all by coincidence. These people were, were led to teach me, and I met a wonderful woman named Susan Pullen, who is a shamanic practitioner, and I just met with her to ask questions, just to ask her, you know, what, is, what does it mean to be a shaman, and what's that process look like? Can you just, can anyone be one? And, and um, we had a great talk, and in the middle of it, she just kind of stopped, looked off into the distance, and she said, I'm hearing that I'm, I'm going to be one of your teachers, so let's work together. And that was pretty cool. <laughs> so she and I started working together and um, she intuitively taught me how to open up the directions, which she didn't realize is the way of Aztecs and Mayans and how we begin our shamanic journeys and how we start our ritual. And so she taught me how to open up the directions and to sit in each direction and what that meant to be. Um, she taught me about the shamanic drums and the rattles, and it just was natural. It was very, very natural that this would unfold. So she was my first shamanic teacher, and it just felt so right and so yummy to be doing these rituals and these practices, and again, working deeply with nature and looking for those, those calls and those signals in nature. So it was just, it was amazing how right it felt and how comfortable it felt. and almost like she gave me a book and I just started reading and it was all about remembering. It wasn't so much about learning as it was remembering what it is because every time I tried something new, it was like, oh yeah, I remember how to do this. I remember how to, to, to call to the directions. I remember how to, to, how to bring in help. I remember all of it. So it was, that's been fascinating. I wouldn't say it's been learning so much as remembering. So in your practice, have you found that for people that are on the same kind of journey, uh, mm -hmm. is, is it similar for them that it's a remembering? I mean, maybe it's not ancestral or shamanic. Maybe it's with crystals or, uh, it, you know, communicating with animals or whatever that might be. But yeah. have you found that that is, uh, is similar in the unfolding of the gifts for, for other people? It, it is now. I know, I'm sure that you've heard that there's a big shift from the 3D to the 5D just in the last few months. And in the last few months, I have heard that more, that people aren't learning so much about spirits, you know, uh, mysticism and spirituality that they are remembering. And I see a lot of younger people in my practice. And if I bring something up that might be a little woo-woo, they don't think it's woo-woo at all. They're like, well, that makes sense. Of course. Of course I would call in help. Of course I would work with ancestors. Of course I would transmute energy. 
So I think that now it is. Now it is people are remembering what it's like to actually be who we're meant to be, which is souls in a human experience. That's that's a great share, and the the young people that are, uh, it, yeah. it's almost practical for them yeah. that they just bring that that piece into it. Yeah, uh, I, and, I work with my kids all the time, and anytime I ask them, you know, hey, you want to do a clearing or you want to work with the stone, they're like, yeah, why wouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> why wouldn't I do that, mom? <laughs> So they, you've gotten a, an extremely high level of validation in so many ways um, yes. with the, yeah. with what you've received as far as who's shown up in your uh, third dimensional reality, how your kids have jumped on board, how your yeah. ancestors have shown up, how yeah. the, uh, the how that all unfolded is is really fascinating. Uh, it, it sounds like your initial curiosity is a big part of what drove you for discovery. So how do you keep that alive now? What is that, how, how does that continue for you? Um, I don't think I could stop it if I tried. <laughs> it's, all, it's always in my face. Um, there's always something new to learn. It's always something new that pops up on my radar or people that I meet. Um, it just seems like it's, it's a constant barrage, a welcome constant barrage. And I find that if I don't force things, if I just sit back and let it unfold, amazing things happen. Like meeting you was, is one of them. I mean, that was the circuitous way that that all unfolded. And it was one where I just, I just find that if I sit back, things happen, things come pop up on my radar. And then that, I know that that's what I'm supposed to go after rather than that relentless hunger of trying to go and find and find and find and do and do and do. So there's, there's definitely a uh, well, first of all, there's a mutual feeling there. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited that we met. And there's yeah. so many uh, interesting things that you do that you've brought together. Uh, yeah. The shaman piece very much resonates with me as well. So that's why your journey is so fascinating for me. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like you still have the level of curiosity, uh, but it's almost matured in a way where, you, where you've really grounded in being the observer. And, and, and that's what works for you. And, yeah. and you're honoring that and, and following that and sticking, almost kind of sticking with those guns. Is that, would yes. that be accurate? <laughs> yeah. When I find myself forcing things, my guides aren't as prevalent. I'm not noticing the synchronicities as much. Um, and I think it's because it's that doing, doing, doing mentality rather than noticing. And when I stop that and I just sit back and notice, I will literally see hundreds of different kinds of feathers left on my on my walks um at the grocery store parking lot um just random on my deck <laughs> i'll get this abundance of of just beautiful feathers left for me and that's always been my sign i also work with the angels that they're like hey you got it girl keep going on this path just settle down we got you just let things unfold and so that's a nice validation always is those feathers that they leave me that you just, just keep noticing. Don't do the doing, just notice. <laughs> I, I love that you share it that way. Feathers are, are, are really, uh, they're just a beautiful connection. And, yeah. and I see them so often on some days, I wonder if I'm supposed to pick every one of them up <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> or if, if, if I'm just supposed to observe them. I, I, yeah. You get to, that, get to that point where there's just so many. I could spend my whole life uh, you know, you know, following each one to the next one, but who knows yeah. where that might lead, right? Right, so, right. Um, a, a question that, that I, I feel like could really help some, some people is uh, you mentioned that when you're... Uh, when you're really observing and you're in what works for you, that's when your guides are more prevalent. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you were to give advice to people that are just getting in touch with their guides, yeah. uh, other than just it being an observation, what, what sorts of things would, would you suggest for people to, to try to, to maybe put in their toolbox and, and see how it works for them? Yeah. Uh, meditation, number one. And that doesn't have to be sit quietly and try to think of nothing. <laughs> that means um, listen to beautiful music that calms you. Um, even just writing, journaling, 
Um, getting out in nature, one of my favorite ways is just any sort of moving meditation, whether it's hiking, walking, um, crossfitting, just anything to, to get yourself moving in that moving meditative state. And then to not try, it's more of an allowing rather than a seeking. It's an allowing of information and it's just whatever pops into your head and whether that's recording that um, or writing it down. Um, I know a couple of friends who just will sit like this and record themselves of just whatever is coming through until that becomes more comfortable and they realize it's actually their guides telling them, you know, this is what you need to hear right now. And for me, it's writing things down. I might even um, ask a question, write down the question, what would spirit like me to know right now? And just being quiet for a moment or listening to music and the answers will come. And then you get used to hearing the answers. Sometimes you just hear it. It's a quiet voice in your head. Sometimes it sounds like your own. Sometimes it sounds like something completely different. Sometimes it's images. Yeah, it's, it's definitely getting yourself into a quiet way, whatever works for you, and just allowing information to come through in whatever way it comes through. You can even feel it. Those, those are all great suggestions. Thank you for, for sharing yeah. those pieces. There's, uh, obviously, there's kind of the top five, you know, in yeah. meditation and getting out in nature. And uh, yeah. those are always really powerful. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things that I really connect with with nature is the level of harmony that's there. You don't really have to actually do anything with it. You can just mm -hmm. be in the energy and really uh, take an opportunity to connect. And like you said, allow just allowing yourself to open up and allowing what, what's there to be that exchange. Uh, I, I always tell people that hugging a tree is a real thing. <laughs> it is a real thing. <laughs> and that's and it, a scary. <laughs> it is. It is. And they, they can do so much for us. And they're so integrated and connected uh, through the earth and through their, you know, their roots and their system. And uh, when, when you start to observe, you start to realize how many levels there are to different things. Yes. And, and like you said, it's about finding what works for you right. and, and, and you as a general sense and, mm -hmm. and, and really going with that. So uh, yeah. I, I'm a seeker of knowledge and, and I find that I, I always have that thirst, uh, yeah. but it's when I really get to talk to people about what I found and what I've experienced and what they've experienced. That's when I really, uh, things really turn on for me. That's when my, my guides show up and they're like, yes, yes, that's it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ooh, shiny. Ooh, shiny. Exactly. Yeah. And it's that playfulness. It's that playfulness that I think is, is key and people miss out on that. They think it should be the serious business to connect with your guides and, you know, deepen your intuition. And I truly believe that it is, needs to be playful at all times. Always be playful with it. Not so serious. I, <laughs> I agree a hundred percent. That's, uh, that, that's, that's one of the driving forces of this internet TV show, yeah. The Spiritual Handyman, is about having some fun and kind of loosening up and not really getting too serious about the subjects because yeah. uh, when you're following that, your life is so much fun. There's, yeah. there's so many great things happening. Uh, so I know you have some, some great things going on in September. So yeah. um, will you share with us in September what your, uh, like what your current specials are and what yeah. you might have going on and, and how we can reach out to you, how we can contact you personally? Right. Thank you. Um, yeah. So I'm offering 20% off for the month of September on all my packages and all my sessions. Um, and that is if you buy the package in the month of September, you can use it at any time. So it doesn't mean you have to use it right away. You can use that at any time, just as long as it's purchased in the month of September. And the code for that is back to school, um, which is the impetus of starting this because there's a need for some <laughs> balance and mental wellness as everybody's heading back off to school and trying to get into the new rhythm of things. Um, and you can find that information at my website at simplesolutionshypnosis.com. Um, you can also find me on Facebook under the same name, Simple Solutions Hypnosis. And um, I'm also on Instagram at wleva underscore simple solutions hypno. So I'm a, a couple of different places. Um, yeah. 
Well, great, great. Thank you for sharing those pieces. And uh, for our viewers, if you guys are wanting to get in touch with Wendy directly, or you want to get in on the, the Facebook page or check out her, her website, that information will be included in the comments. Uh, we'll I'll also uh, put it in a graphic here at the end of the show so you can, can, can reach out to her if that's what you'd like to do. And uh, Wendy, I want to say thank you so much for really uh, providing some great tools today and some suggestions uh, and, and sharing your story with us. Uh, it's pretty amazing how things have unfolded for you. And I know that it's inspirational for me as somebody who's on a shamanic path as well to, to, to hear how far it can really go. Yeah. And, and thank you so much for taking the time to share that with our community. Uh, someday, I would love to talk about your hypnosis yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere down the road and how that uh, now fits into your spiritual piece. Uh, but yeah. thank you so much for your time today and for your participation. Yeah, thank you, Jason. I appreciate it. All right. You take care and uh, we'll see you down the trail a little ways. All right. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Wendy. Bye.